Welcome to Best Music Podcast, where we talk about the hidden habits and success secrets of notable music makers. I'm your host, Dan Spencer, and this week's featured guest is Fabio Rojas. Now, Fabio Rojas is a drummer, film composer, and educator based in New York City, originally from Valencia, Venezuela. Fabio has performed with such artists as, get ready for this, folks, Terry Lane Carrington, Jerry Allen, Greg Osby Band, Bill Pierce, Sean Jones, Kevin Harris, John Lockwood, Nino de los Reyes, Manuel Valera, Paula Champion, Mike Rodriguez, Pablo Menares, Jason Palmer, John Cowherd, Regina Carter, Rachel Z. Hakim, David Bixler, and Greg Otis. In addition to performing and composing music for films and commercials, Fabio is currently part of the faculty at the Brooklyn Conservatory of Music. Fabio plays Canopus drums, Vader drumsticks, and Zildjian cymbals exclusively. Fabio just recorded his album debut, very first one ever. Ever as a leader called Perseverance, which is going to be released in summer 2023. He also recently composed music for the short film Cinema's First Nasty Women coming out soon. And, of course, he is part of the duo with Kevin Harris with the exciting new project Contra Luz, which is out December 18th. You can find Fabio at FabioRojasMusic.com. That's F-A-B-I-O-R-O-J-A-S-M-U-S-I-C.com. And on all social media platforms as Fabio Rojas Music. Fabio, thanks so much for taking time to come hang out with me, hang out with me today. Thank you for having me. 100%. So, mm-hmm. Fabio... As we talked about, the whole goal of our time here together is to learn what you've done well, what you've learned along the way to help other music makers, both now and in the future, move the conversation forward about making music so we can all learn and grow together. So Mm -hmm. let's start with some lifestyle things. Mm -hmm. Uh, How many hours of sleep do you need to feel no negative impact on your creativity and musical performance the next day? That's a very good question. Uh, Depends on the day of the week. Um, okay. Six hours, sometimes, you know, eight hours is uh, the perfect scenario, but not all mm. the time we have the time. Eight, I recommend eight hours, but six hours is fine. Or like last night, I slept four hours because I had to finish a project. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for hanging with me you today, <laughs> and I hope we can keep your eyes open to my questions are not too boring that I put you to sleep here no. while you're on camera. So uh, have you ever used mindfulness or meditation to impact your performance or creativity? Uh, no. Have not you ever used exercise to try and impact performance or creativity? Yes. Okay. And how do you find that exercise uh, helps impact performance and creativity? Exercise is very important for the body and for the mind, even mm. especially on the, the days that, that you don't want to do it. Uh, I have to do more exercise, uh, I admit it. Uh, but it's very important, you know, uh, for the mindset, just to do one thing and keep and stay in shape, you know, is, is very, very important. And to disconnect from everything and then go back to whatever you have to do also uh, the drum set is very physical so that's also kind of an exercise so you release a lot lot of energy also there which is kind of therapeutic for me too you know and also i'm practicing at the same time so how do people in your life support your ability to make music and be creative oh a lot my parents uh support me all the time um speak to them all the time and in every single stage of my career they have supported me as the best as i can and made a lot of sacrifices so i could be here i'm from venezuela and i went to berkeley and you know i had a scholarship but even with a scholarship you know that implies a lot of cost and my wife also supports me a lot in all the craziness and dreams that i have Hey, can I do this? Go for it, you know. (laughs) Should I do it? Should I go for it? Yes. Okay. My sister, too. So, yeah, I have a very supportive family. So, Mm -hmm. I think that helps a lot. It's a beautiful thing. I'm very happy for you. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about mindset. How Mm -hmm. do you personally define success? Because there's a lot of ways 
musicians can define success, right? You can look at your Spotify numbers. You can say, okay, I had five new subscribers today and 200 streams. Surely I am successful today. But some people don't find that to be the meaning of success or the goal. How do you define success? Success is a very personal point of view. Each person, you know, the thing, what you mentioned is, is, is happening right now a lot with social media and streams and everything. You have these numbers that can make you happy for two minutes and then that's it. It's not as tangible. Uh, but no, success for me is having a good environment, like personal environment, supportive environment, good quality of life. Do what makes you happy. Like what really makes you happy, because no, no, not doing something now because it gives you profit or whatever. I mean, it's great and everything, but you have to be happy and try to find um, what is the thing that you were made to do. You know, so as long as you're happy and your mental health is fine, doing what you like, I mm. think that's success. The other things Could are you- extra. You know, could you break that down that last part a little bit? You say doing what you like is fine as long as your mental health is okay. Could you break mm-hmm. down what you mean by that? Of course, uh, because you know, like I didn't sleep too much last night, but if I do that over a certain period of time, that's going to have a toll in the body and also in the mind. You know, mm. whether I like it or not, it's just you know nature. And so today, and I have to sleep eight hours okay and that's important for the mind to recover and for the whole body and for the brain now if you do things that you don't like and that affects your mindset and that affects your your personal uh happiness or you know so yeah does that answer your question i think so so (laughs) let's see if i understand correctly so Mm -hmm. what you're saying is okay Let's say we have uh, l- let's say we have a drummer named John, okay? Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, John is a jazz drummer. John went to Berkeley. John mm-hmm. actually, incidentally, is also from Venezuela, just like you. So I think mm-hmm. I think y- you and John have 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 a lot in common. <laughs> so uh, the, the, this drummer named John, mm-hmm. um, he slept four hours last night, mm-hmm. uh, and he got a call uh, to go play a very late night set. Mm-hmm. in new york city like a 2 a.m type thing like you know like the end of the night type mm-hmm. thing and why he only got called for the 2 a.m slot and he didn't show up early in the evening we're not going to really worry about that but just for the <laughs> for, for, for the point of this example he got mm-hmm. called to show up to play a 2 a.m set are you saying that because john doesn't want to compromise his mental health right and he doesn't want to have a negative impact that then weighing that in the opportunity, right? There's the opportunity of going out to play. He might play with somebody he's never played before. He might find a new career opportunity, but also to weigh going to sleep, taking care of yourself in that decision-making process. Is that correct? No. <laughs> okay. No. So I did, uh, I did not understand. No. Uh, in that case, I mean, is organization, organize the time. If he has a gig at 2 a.m., uh, then you can take a power nap of two hours during the day. And then go to do the gig. And then after the gig, sleep as much as you want. You know. But all, uh, what, what I mean is to always remain sane, basically. Like, mm. uh, if you're practicing, and it's like, oh, I need to practice eight hours a day. <laughs> okay, great. If you have the time, good. Uh, but it's not only, it's not practicing eight hours without stopping. You know, hurting your shoulder or anything. No, it's, okay, 45 minutes, then I take a break. Then another... 30 minutes, then I take a break because you need the break for the body, you know, to stretch and everything. So in the total, it's eight hours, but it's not eight hours just just because, you know. And, you, and sometimes you don't, you, don't, you don't have the same amount of energy and you don't have the same control. So, mm. mm-hmm. How do you find that energy impacts control? And are you talking about technical control? Yeah, on the instrument. Mm. Mm-hmm. And how do you find that that energy impacts technical control just in the same way that when you're tired, it would impact any sort of fine motor movement? Well, that's why you practice and develop a discipline practicing 
So when you're super tired and there's not too much energy, especially touring, you can channel the only energy you have for the music and let it come out, you know. Mm -hmm. That's why you practice and, and have the necessary control. Like, like you know, do, do you play an instrument, for example? Sure. Yeah, I get, I get, yeah. I get, I get. Oh, yeah. You play guitar and one day it's like... Frrr, the other day is not as fast, but it's fast, but it's not as fast as yes. maybe the day before. But you practice and develop a control that, okay, your minimum is here. It's not as fast as, you know, you did it yesterday. But it's proficient enough, but, you know, so that works and keeps you going. Yeah, developing mm -hmm. a, a, a reservoir of proficiency or another way of looking at it is developing your proficiency to such a high level that even when you are compromised, you still are at a professional level of exactly. proficiency. Mm -hmm. So, Fabio, when you think of yourself, your sort of self-identity, do you think of yourself as a musician, like, I am Fabio, I am a musician, or do you think of yourself as, I am Fabio a human, one of the things I do is play music? Or is it something else, the way you think of yourself? Uh, I'm a human being. And I play music. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Have yeah. you ever it's had a point in your life where you thought of yourself as, I am Fabio, the musician? Yes. Yeah, growing up, you know, when you're figuring things out, uh, you know. And also, am I only a drummer? That was another thing. Okay, I'm ah. just a drummer, uh, film composer. How do I put it together? Uh, you know. And... I always had that thing, like how to put both together, uh, the drums and the film scoring. And this project, Contra Luz, is one of them, like the sound effects and the tech and the drums and the other thing is a lot of things from film scoring being applied on a live setting. That I always wanted to do that. And finally, it's coming out in a way, you know. So you've achieved a lot so far in your career, you. I'm sure, and I'm excited for the future to see you achieve even more, not in terms of, you know, again, the quantifiable success of metrics, but you clearly, to get to this point, you've set a lot of goals and you've mm -hmm. reached those goals. So what do you think your number one piece of advice for anyone about achieving goals in music is? Believing in yourself and believing in the dream mm. because it is possible. It can take... A lot of years, but everything is possible if you put the work in it. Mm. And even when it doesn't look, look like it's going to happen for several years in a row, or <laughs> if you're in maybe in a country that there are no possibilities like it happened mm. in my case, it is possible. There is always a way, you know. Somehow the universe will find a way. What is the number one mistake you have learned to avoid when it comes to setting and achieving goals? Number one mistake. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe um, time management with everything. Hmm. Maybe it's setting like you have one goal, but you have a hundred tasks. And you're like, yeah, I can do all those. And they're like, no, no, no. You know, one at a time. <laughs> yes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. learning even when you have a monumental goal, instead of trying to attack 100 things at once, you attack one thing at a time. You put it in a good, smart order. You go down the list. Structure it. Yeah, And how indeed. everything takes you step by step closer to that. It doesn't have to be like one step right away. It can be one yes. little, little by little. And have the patience to, you know, be step by step in the stairwell. And I think just to add on to what you said, I think it's important for people, like, especially if you're, especially if you're at a stage where you're learning to play an instrument and that's really what you're focusing on, if you stack the things that you are learning too high on the instrument, it's not a, I have two things to learn and it takes me twice as long. It's I have two things to learn and because I'm trying to do both of those at the same time, it takes me three times, four times as long. The mm -hmm. math works out on a technical level and also on a skills level that if you try and bite off too much, it ends up taking much more time than focusing, as you said, on one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about practice. So mm -hmm. do you have a time or times of day where you would prefer to practice? Yes. I uh, prefer practicing at night. <clears throat> now I don't have enough time to practice as before and when I was in school. 
Mm. Uh, back then, I used to practice every day, four and a half hours, only on the drum set, plus, you know, playing samples and playing with people. But now it's, you know, either a show or teaching or the practicing is practicing the technique rudiments to, uh, or learning the music for a gig. But I prefer practicing at night. I'm more awake. I got used hmm. to it. Yeah. And currently, how are you dividing your practice time? Depends on the day and depends on the sure. gigs that I have. Uh, so let's say you're not preparing for a gig because learning repertoire is learning repertoire, right? So let's mm-hmm. say you don't have a performance for the next two weeks. How are mm-hmm. you going to structure your practice time? Practice time or the day? If I have like as many hours as I can, so I'll do one hour technique. That's a priority one. Mm. Because I will keep all the muscles in shape and the control also in shape. Mm. If that doesn't happen, I cannot do anything. Uh, also, everything with the metronome. So I, I keep the muscle of the, of the tempo also in shape. Um, coordination. Uh, endurance. And half an hour just having fun playing whatever I want. So if I have four hours, that's like one hour technique. One hour, well, one hour, no, 45 minutes. All in 45 minutes, but 15 minute break. Technique, uh, grooves, uh, endurance, and um, having fun. Hmm. <laughs> you can switch the order. You know, sometimes you just want to play, and the drums are like, play me, play me. You, just, <laughs> you know, that's it. But, you know. That's important. Too. Well, Fabio, if, if the drums start speaking to you more, we may have to talk a little bit more about mental health <laughs> and sleep and things like that. But <laughs> for, for now, we'll, we'll just uh, we'll groove on to the next question. Wh- mm-hmm. What do you think is the maximum length for an effective technique practice session? Depends. Depends on each person. Uh, for you. Um. I mean, I try to do an hour, an hour a day of technique, mm. only technique. All the rudiments. I run all the rudiments mm. and one technique uh, because the way the muscles work, you know, I do one technique one day and another technique another day to keep uh, those muscles. Otherwise, yes. uh, they get confused. So you don't want that for the muscle memory. Huh. Mm-hmm. So getting a little bit into the neuroscience of that, uh, essentially, and I'm sure you understand this, but just break this down mm-hmm. for our listeners. The way it works is uh, for musicians and actually anyone doing anything with fine motor movements is you do a fine motor movement. Your brain records that and then plays it back while you're sleeping. Mm-hmm. So is what you're saying is that with that knowledge, you don't try to overlap the recordings of the muscle memory well we call it muscle memory it's not muscle memory it's mm-hmm. it's neural pathways you're strengthening neural pathways but you're trying to just focus singularly on one day on mm-hmm. one neural pathway on one day. that's fascinating and actually mm-hmm. i think pretty smart too yeah that was uh huh. kim plainfield told me that he was my mentor huh him and terry that's yeah. that's amazing mm-hmm that's a revelation. Yeah. I've not. I've not even thought. I knew the science, and I didn't put two and two together to even think about it that way. That's that's incredible. Mm-hmm. Wow! Thank you for that. No, no, thank you. Uh, when you practice the most in your life, when you were thinking to yourself, "I am Fabio the musician," <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, most of us were that guy at some point in our oh, yeah. in our in our Everybody. careers, right? Okay, <laughs> when, when, when you were that guy, how many hours would you practice a day? Uh, that time was four and a half hours only on the drum set, and then okay. But let's say you didn't have class, so it's like the weekend. Let's say it's the weekend, and you're not going to give yourself a break. You're going to have a practice weekend. What does that look like? Then five or six hours. Uh. To stay healthy also in the muscles because yes uh for over practicing when i was in school in the undergrad i developed chronic tendonitis really over practicing yeah mm. so you know i try to dose it off basically and what what interventions did you take to uh stop that besides like not practicing as much or not playing for a couple of weeks um, so that was the thing because it was in the middle of the classes and I wanted to keep improving and I wanted to keep playing. So it took very several steps. Um, I went to chiropractor, 
That didn't work for me. It worked for some people. Again, depends on every person. Different things work. Didn't work for me. I went to physical therapy. That helped, but still didn't do the whole thing. I had to change a lot of uh, routines. Uh, mm. um, instead of carrying a backpack, I had a rolling bag. Uh, like carrying the laptop and books and the symbols and everybody carries a symbol on the back and I use a rolling back since then uh, carrying the drums get lighter hardware mm. uh, it was a whole thing and acupuncture was the biggest uh. helper huh. yeah I didn't know anything about acupuncture again Kim told me hey why would you why don't you try acupuncture it helped him in, uh, some years back and it was great it helped me a lot. That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think is your number one piece of advice for practice? Um, focus. Mm. Focus on what you're practicing. Because there's so much information. And now you have access to every single information in the world just in your phone. So you have to structure and know what you want to do okay what's the goal okay in this semester i want to play i don't know music from brazil okay water steps but you have to do one thing at a time so really get it you know because if you just do all of them i mean if you can do them amazing but you know in my case i have to do one at a time structure basically focus what's the number one mistake you've learned to avoid with practicing uh to avoid what do you mean yeah so what's a mistake you made in the past that you've learned to not do anymore now oh i learned a lot about muscles and tendons <laughs> i bet and <laughs> <laughs> took a while <laughs> so to know not pushing the tendons or not pushing the the, the muscles like you you learn how, where is like where's the limit like hey i'm getting to mm. the limit Let's breathe more, you know, stretch. And, you know, it's very important to be breathe a lot while playing, playing the drums, you know. Do you take any steps to cr uh, protect your creative space, either physically or mentally? Which way? Well, so, for example, uh, mm -hmm. when I am doing anything creative, I turn my phone off and I hide my phone somewhere where I'm not going to see it even if I walk out of the room. So that's the way I protect my creative physical space and mental space. Okay. Mm, while practicing? Practicing, composing, writing. Yeah, I mean, I keep this, the phone uh, in case there's a show, there's a gig that pops up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that, um, but I just put the headphones and try to isolate. Mm. You know, I just isolate myself, just focus. Yeah. Nothing too specific. What do you mm -hmm. think your number one piece of advice for people for developing and deepening creativity is? Exploring. Mm. And think what a baby would do, in my case, with a drum or with your instrument. Ah. You would just have fun and just, you know, figure it out, just hit it or, you know, or scratch it. Same thing. And they're just having fun doing that. So remember of yourself being a kid and implementing it. What's the number one mistake you've learned to avoid around trying to, and I'm doing air quotes for our listeners, be creative? Can you, can you say it again? Sure. What's mm -hmm. a mistake you made in the past mm -hmm. when you tried to be creative that you learned to not do now? Ah, um, either overplay or put an idea that you, I've been working on, I don't know, you know, like independence, what I like, and like a copy paste, like, yeah, I'm going to play this here. And no, 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 it doesn't work. Nothing happens. Uh, it doesn't help the music. Uh -huh. So always play, even if it's just a quarter note, whatever the music requires. Huh. Mm -hmm. So don't don't try and take that solo that really worked for you last night and try and recreate it tonight. Be fresh. Be a baby. Be in the moment. Be the be water, like Bruce be water. Lee. 
used to say. Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. So I just have uh, about two more questions for you, Fabio. Yeah. The first is: Has performance anxiety ever threatened to impact or impacted your performance? No, uh, I see performance anxiety as a good thing. You know, it's like so? uh, it's like respect for the music, respect for the event that you're about to do. So if you don't have it, something's wrong. <laughs> you know, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> You should be a little scared, like, oh, we're about to play. This is exciting, you know, kind of nervous or whatever. Oh, okay. But that's respect that you have for the music. So that's a good thing, you know, in my in my point of view. What do you think the most significant mistake you have made throughout your entire music journey up to this point has been? And what did you learn from it? Say that again, say that again. What's the biggest mistake that you have made in music, in learning music, playing music, performing music? What's the biggest mistake you've made, and what did you learn from making that mistake? Hmm. Very good question. I mean, a lot of mistakes. We're all humans. We make mistakes yes. every day. <laughs> What's one that stands out to you? Hmm. Maybe. <clears throat> Not taking directions right away. As a student, mm. uh, like stubborn, mm. being a stubborn student, uh, you know, yeah, I think that one. It's the best way to waste time. Yeah. And then years later, oh, it was right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that was, that was what he meant. That's what he meant. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, Fabio, thanks so much for coming to hang out with me. Uh, everyone, go check out FabioRojasMusic.com. Fabio just recorded his debut album, which we're going to look forward to listen to in the summer 2023. And his project with Kevin Harris named Contra Luz is going to be out December 18th. Everything, links for all that is going to be in the description if you're on video and in the show notes if you are on audio. Fabio, thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy schedule to come hang out and chat with me. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, this has been fun.